In the last indoor bonsai episode, we discovered some rot when we did an experiment with the wounds of my Portulacaria Afra bonsai tree. Today we need to figure out how to handle the wound and I'm also going to use a dwarf jade bending trick to reset some of the structure. Bonsai on social media can sometimes look like it's all drastic work and radical transformations. In fact, a lot of the work in bonsai is incremental updates and improvements and that's what I have lined up for today's video. So without further ado, let's kick off the episode. Before I do anything else, I'm going to do a quick prune. I like to keep on top of healthy jades as they thicken up quite fast, so I find keeping on top of any coarse growth essential. Cleaning also gets any road material out of the way, making life just that bit easier. I'm looking for threes, verticals, top and bottom, and any unwanted branches. I'm also checking length and cutting back to the desired silhouette. It's the usual quick wins to ease into today's work. Right, now I can think straight, I'm going to look at this wound. It looks like what happened is the core has died back to the previous node, but the side branch has kept some vascular tissue alive. I don't actually need this little branch for the design. I have two nearby pieces to use in that space, but I won't cut it off until I'm happy the wound isn't going to die back. So I'm going to remove this plug of dead material and see what we've got underneath. And pop that out. I don't think it goes past the node below, which is great news. Still, I don't like the risk of taking all of this crater back to that node beneath now, but when it's outside, this is going to hold a pool of water. So I'm going to cut a channel to allow water to drain out of that hole so the wound doesn't stay wet and rot. Once I'm confident the wound won't continue to die back, I'll remove this branch that's keeping sap flow in the area and create more of a flat wound instead of this crater. So far so good. Now as I'm looking at the design, I can see some primary structure that needs to be repositioned. Bending Portulacaria afra branches is a bit of a weird experience to be honest with you. The branches feel like they can bend quite far, but when you flex the branches, the joints look like they will open and potentially snap. To help safely reposition some branches and the apical region, I'm going to use a trick reserved only for dwarf jade. Being a succulent, the plant stores reserves of water within its vascular system and leaves. During times of drought, that stored water is used to sustain the plant. And when the plant is hydrated, it is visibly turgid. The branches and leaves look really plump and full, but the branches are also less flexible in this state. So for the previous couple of weeks or so, I've not watered at all, allowing it to dry right out and use up all its reserves of water. The branches are less turgid and much more flexible, so I can position the branches with much more confidence and less risk of a nasty surprise. I'm positioning this back branch further to the back to eventually occupy the space that would be created when this branch is removed. That move has opened space to the right, so I will lower this right hand branch a touch while bringing it forward a bit to fully occupy the space at the side of the tree. I'll use a piece of wire to position this branch and simultaneously add a movement to the upper trunk and position the apical region. I'll tweak these two primary branches to better occupy this space. We 
With the reduced turgidity, there is a bigger difference between the flexibility of the branch and the stiffness of the wire. So to reduce risk of damage while I apply the wire, my supporting hand needs to be working overtime. The off hand actually has three responsibilities. Its role is to support the branch so it doesn't break off as wire is wound around. It prevents the wire shifting in place as more turns are added and ensures the wire has good contact with the branch. The key hand is simply applying wire at the desired angle and location. That's the easy bit. We've got one, two, three, four branches all in roughly the same area and I definitely don't need them all. By removing this one, I can reduce clutter and shading while still having enough branches to create our canopy. Finally, as a hard-earned reward, I'll give the bonsai a good drink and keep it well hydrated from now on. Subscribers, I have a big announcement coming in the next video. I've got some exciting changes to tell you all about. I really hope you can make it. Thanks for watching and take care.